The Red Turtle is a 2016 wordless animated movie that's beautiful and subtle and clear in its intent. To be life. I love this movie. I consider it to be one of the best Studio Ghibli has ever produced, right up there with Grave of the Fireflies, Spirited Away, and Wind Rises. Directed by Michael Dudok DeWitt and co-produced by Studio Ghibli and Wild Bunch, a German film distribution company, it marks the first occasion where, 30 years into their production, the studio turned to animation outside of Japan, reaching out to someone who they truly believed was incredibly talented and giving him the freedom to make his own movie without them intervening in the creative process. And it was this show of faith that allowed one of the most unique films in their repertoire to come to life. And yet, as unique as it is, I feel like it didn't get the attention it deserved. See, Ghibli's future was a bit uncertain in 2014, after legendary director Hayao Miyazaki announced his retirement, following the release of The Wind Rises in 2013, which led to a lot of their staff leaving to found Studio Ponok. Now among them was Hiromasa Yonebayashi, Miyazaki's protégé and a talented director in his own right. I think a lot of people already had it in their minds that he would be the one to carry Ghibli's torch, and the fact that he left made it unclear whether they were ever going to produce another film. That is, until The Red Turtle was announced and premiered at the 2016 Cannes Film Festival. So there might have been a bit of an unfair expectation for this movie to be different from what it turned out to be. Both the art style and narrative are very distant from what fans of Miyazaki's or Isao Takahata's work may have expected, but here's the thing. At this point, I think it's a fundamental mistake to set any expectations at all for a film produced by the Japanese studio, instead of just enjoying it for what it is. I'm always excited to watch their movies because I never really know what I'm gonna get, and The Red Turtle stays true to that. But it also stands on its own as a beautiful piece of cinema, regardless of any association with the Japanese studio. It has a lot to say, but if you let your own expectations get in the way, you're going to miss that. So what is it trying to say? What is the idea at its core? Here is a film that knows exactly what it wants to be, where the director discards everything that might become a hindrance to its story. If we're looking for expositional dialogue, complex plot twists or flashy animation, this is not where we will find it. What we do get are characters and the relationship between them. A setting that is beautifully executed without ever stealing our focus away from the characters. And sound, both in the form of the island's ambient sound, or the brilliant soundtrack by Laurent Perez del Mar. There is a unique beauty to this simplicity, a beauty that we shouldn't be afraid to appreciate, to immerse ourselves in. We are constantly searching for the underlying meaning in our art, often refusing to give any value to something that is simply beautiful. With this movie, I think it's impossible to separate one from the other. I saw this film on three separate occasions when it released in cinemas, and while I was immediately drawn to it, it was only on my third viewing that I realized why because of how natural the relationship between the characters feels. Like Joe O'Connell from Beyond Ghibli said, this is a character study through and through. Themes such as finding happiness where you are are present on a surface level, but anchored with core ideas such as loneliness and companionship, guilt and forgiveness, compromise and trust. I think this is a perfect description of the themes present in The Red Turtle. If you were to take the setting of a deserted island away, this would still be a story about people learning from each other and growing together, creating memories along the way, pushing through the bad times, and eventually coming to terms with the bitter sweetness of life. This is something we can all relate to. First time I saw the Red Turtle, it had been little more than a year since I'd moved to a different country. 
I went from a small, fairly quiet city to a buzzing metropolis, leaving most of my friends, work, and passion projects behind. I was still trying to make sense of everything. Life wasn't great, and a lot of those days were not very good days. It hit close to home. I could relate to the confusion, frustration, and fear felt by the characters. I could even relate to the sudden bursts of anger, because it is so easy to get lost. And that is why the Red Turtle is so important to me. It helped me remember something that I'd forgotten along the way. Life will sometimes be scary and confusing. Sometimes you will hurt, and sometimes you will be hurt. Sometimes you will have no idea what you are doing or where you are going. You will be overwhelmed and you will panic. And sometimes I'm still scared. Some days are still very bad days, but that's okay. All of these things are okay. Because that's life. And even if at times it's hard to remember this, it will always be worth it. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'm not a filmmaker or editor, but putting this together was one of the most gratifying things I've done in a long time. I will be working hard on this channel, so keep an eye out for new content. A big thanks to Joe for allowing me to reference his work. I highly recommend you guys check out his videos, they're honestly brilliant. And of course, thank you Mikey. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Not only for your amazing content and hard work, but also giving me the push I needed to get off the floor and put effort into something I love. See you next time.